uh, my disclosures, which include uh, uh, grant work in this area, uh, both from uh, uh, state and federal uh, sources. Um, before we start, we've talked a lot about the, the widget making that we do and the operating room. So I thought we'd take a little bit of a different uh, uh, focus here. We're going to talk about uh, the Toyota production system, which I'll call TPS, from here forward. We're going to talk about um, challenges in healthcare and why this is uh, thinking is important. Um, the, the issue really is one of our local leaders here in town about talking about what the payers want to pay for now. And that a lot of what we are doing uh, uh, needs uh, a little bit better teamwork in terms of choosing patients and also in terms of providing a more predictable result. So for those of you that uh, have been to Pike Place Market, um, you know what you're buying and you know the quality that you're going to get. However, when you're purchasing healthcare, both quality and price are under the table. Uh, there's a second question about predictability. Are we providing predictable results with spinal surgery? Um, I'll let you think about that. Um, and others are writing about us now in the, in, the, in the national press saying we are not providing good care, that we have an uh, avalanche of unnecessary procedures that's harming patients. Then there's the issue about accountability. Who's accountable for our, for our work? Who's accountable for what we're doing? Um, and are we going to be able to keep getting reimbursed for the quality of care that we're delivering? At the same time, we know we're going to be inundated by these procedures. Uh, we have unsustainable healthcare costs, yet increasing demand for spinal surgery, particularly in these elderly patients. So for those of you that haven't studied the Toyota production system, the Toyota production system is essentially a way of thinking. It is a uh, way that has been used by multiple different industries, uh, now also healthcare, about trying to root out waste. So you've heard from our previous speakers about all kinds of waste, waste of motion, waste of transportation, waste of overproduction. Uh, uh, time processing. We need teams, obviously, uh, to work and develop uh, and reduce what in the, in the Japanese word muda, which is waste, uh, the multiple wastes that we have in our system. We also heard this morning about just in time. We need to produce what is right and what is demanded at the time that it is needed, not an overproduction of supplies. One of the founders of the uh, Toyota production system, Taichi Ono, said, without standards, there can be no improvement, which is absolutely true. So I would ask you in your center, are there five different standards for how you choose an operative patient? So we're going to use the Toyota production system to figure out how to operate on the, most, the best and optimized patient. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about flow processes, uh, as Donielle had talked about. And you might say, I'm not building a car. I'm taking care of my, my mother or my grandmother or my sister or somebody else's mother, grandmother, or sister. However, when you got on the airplane to come to Seattle, you expected to get here. You expected a safe, reproducible process. So this is absolutely uh, applicable to healthcare. Now, Creating a culture of continuous improvement means that you're constantly revisiting your own processes. Here's a paper we published on PSOs, which has lean uh, uh, built into it. Here's another paper we published looking at how you build the operating room around how do you standardize flow. Flow was just talked about. Complex scoliosis surgery, large team. 25 different people in and out involved in these. So how, how, do, you, how do you build this to where there is reduced uh, uh, infection risk, there is uh, increased communication, there is visual tracking what's going on during the operation. Then you tie such processes directly to complication reduction. So how do you reduce some of these complications? This is the case of adult spinal deformity surgery. How do we, how do we uh, reduce uh, complications, provide a more predictable result? We've talked about lean vis-a-vis adult spinal deformity surgery. How do we take a lean process and apply it directly to getting a better result in spinal deformity surgery? How do we eliminate variability between providers? How do we standardize appropriateness criteria for who goes to surgery? How do we make this transparent, multidisciplinary, and, and make our best practices improve complication rates? So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that. This is basically the essence of the Toyota production system. And here's the problem. We are not delivering a good product as spine surgeons. Uh, and when we look at ourselves, we need to see what is the reason that this type of variability still exists uh, all over the country, and how it, why is it that we can't provide a more 
uh, 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 sustained and improved product. The idea of teams has been described many times in many other fields, as you just heard. But in, in the case of high-risk spine surgery, uh, the group at Northwestern talked about the high-risk spine protocol and, and getting a team together to mitigate risk prior to surgery. Uh, uh, Charles Fisher's right here. I think this is one of the best papers published in spine in the last 10 years, telling you that the true incidence of complications is actually much higher than you think it is. And, 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 and we actually... Uh, uh, have to do a lot more to get these uh, down, particularly in these major or complex cases. Now, I would ask you, is the more complex spinal surgery sustainable from the payer perspective in 2016 or going into 2017 based on what you see here with uh, the risk of cardiac complications, increased length of stay, really uh, significant uh, uh, procedurally complex procedures with all these tools that you're seeing here today? The answer is probably no. And then you also know that much of this is not going to improve with physical therapy or injections. These patients actually do require surgery. So how are we going to do this? Our ISSG colleagues have shown us that we need about 10 years of longevity without any revision surgery for this to be cost effective. Others, uh, i.e. Atul Gawande in The New Yorker, are, are writing about spinal surgery. They're writing that spinal surgery is an annuity uh, and that it is uh, uh, fraudulently overabused in society and we have to provide something better than that. So we have to look at this from all perspectives as to what other people are looking in on us and saying. And I tell you, here's the reason we have these conundrums. We don't have good algorithms to choose patients. We have a hard time saying no. We have a massive variability in the use of healthcare resources. Uh, outcomes from center to center are, 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 are not the same. Uh, and we have perverse healthcare economics, where the more spine fusion surgery you do, the more you get paid. So we have to change all of this concomitantly. Uh, one of our mentors here in town always said that we never spent enough cerebral time uh, on these patients before surgery. So here is one of the uh, uh, tenets of the Toyota production system, which is respect for people and multidisciplinary medicine. So we have uh, looked at 1,100 uh, adult spinal deformity patients over the last six years, uh, and we have given all providers an equal vote as to the suitability of surgery. So the, the surgeon, the physiatrist, the medicine doctor, the complex spine anesthesiologist all have an equal vote as to suitability of surgery. And we've published work showing that we reject approximately uh, a quarter to 35% of our patients at the first uh, uh, go. Here's team transparency. This is now, with our Center of Excellence contracts, a required medical record entry before any patient can have spinal fusion surgery. This is not just adult deformity surgery, this is any spinal fusion. The case has to be presented in front of a multidisciplinary panel. These people were present, and here's what gets documented. So this is really what we call team transparency. This is a key tenant of the Toyota production system. We first presented this at Copenhagen at, at IMAST uh, year, uh, about six years ago now, and, and we talked about this, and it wasn't very popular back then uh, because this was uh, called a death panel or this was uh, likened to an outgoing president. But we, we think that this standard work is important uh, to provide more predict predictive analytics on these patients and screen risk. So all these patients are now getting DEXA scans. They all get psychological testing. Uh, they all have to att attend formal rehab classes. Uh, and we feel like by giving every member of this committee an equal vote, you're removing perverse economic incentives. So I'll ask you, I've got uh, three minutes left, is this what the market and the patients want? Why do we have to utilize the Toyota production system to standardize our own process and provide a more predictable process? So here is why. Here's a paper that's in press at Spine uh, uh, being published by my current fellow on patients referred to uh, from 47 states offered spinal fusion in 47 states around the country and a multidisciplinary conference evaluation where uh, all of these individuals have an equal vote. We looked at 100 consecutive patients in this, in this uh, 143 consecutive patients in this series and 100 uh, of these patients were offered spinal fusions at outside institutions. 
based on a multidisciplinary evaluation where the surgeon has a vote, but the others have a vote too, uh, 58 pa patients have been recommended non-operative management. We also have shown that with this group, their outcomes are actually the same as the operative group when they're treated by a multidisciplinary rehab team. Alternative uh, approaches are offered for spine fusions for back pain. And you can see here, these were the reasons why, they, why we thought they weren't good candidates, morbidly obese, actively smoking, uh, and misdiagnosis. Change in surgical plans also happens when you have crowds. Wisdom of crowds has been written about. I'm sure you've read about it in many other fields. But this is what happens, and we tend to choose more conservative options for these patients. Here is a great paper in the... Uh, in the uh, um, uh, the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which I'd ask you to look at, which does not look at spine surgery, but looks at other medical fields where when you aggregate the independent judgments of doctors, that outperforms uh, the best doctor in a group. So this is really lean 101. This is the best lean principle I can leave you with, which is that teams and teams that empower all of the individuals to make decisions are better. More uh, uh, lean for you, protocols. Protocols are important. I know Danielle talked about this. Having visual protocols that anybody can refer to when you're going for these complex operations, uh, uh, agreeing on what your resuscitation uh, strategies are, TXA protocol, building a complex a a spine anesthesia team where uh, it's, it's all uh, written out and laid out as to how this is gonna happen, and then involving them in these clearance conferences where they have a right to choose on the suitability of surgery just like you do. The idea of two attending surgeons has been raised uh, particularly by our colleagues in San Francisco, and we've also written a little bit about this, but particularly there, there are times when these operations should be done by two attending surgeons, particularly the three column osteotomies and particularly the more difficult and dangerous uh, procedures where uh, 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 Chris and Vidat in San Francisco have shown significant improvement in all of their uh, uh, negative indicators, as you can see here, particularly uh, the time in surgery, uh, blood loss, and rescheduled surgeries. So the high value care of the future is gonna to have to be predicting complications and that's when we're gonna to have to use risk stratification and protocol development and use uh, uh, ideas like those proposed by the Toyota production system to screen risk. This is a, a, a score that we've developed and I'm gonna go through it very quickly but again, we are trying to predictively model these patients to where we can score them and, and add even more data to say, is this patient in an optimized state to go forward with surgery or not? So here's a patient who's female, who's got a BMI of uh, uh, 40, who's anemic and who's diabetic. In our system has a 92% risk of complications based on our uh, multivariate model with very good receiver operator characteristics. Here's an, this, another patient who's a similar age, who's got a much lower BMI, who's uh, female and doesn't have any of these comorbidities, that's the risk. So this is just extreme examples to show you that every system has its own inherent risk and these risk calculators are gonna be very important for us to go forward. So I do believe that standardization enhances patient safety. I believe that pathways, protocols, and dashboards can help us enhance the durability of what we can do. Um, I think that this is a great uh, uh, example of how you use the Toyota production system uh, to reduce complications. Uh, we have to do much better than we're currently doing. We cannot fix everything. We have to say no much more than we currently do. Uh, we have to remove some of these perverse uh, fee-for-service incentives that are put upon us and empower the team and the surgeons to do a better job. Um, I believe that centers are going to get rewarded for, the, for doing it better, and that's uh, already taken place with uh, uh, some of the work that you read about from uh, Walmart, JetBlue, Lowe's, and others. And I think that uh, surgeons should lead these efforts inside of their own institutions. So you should take this work back and start to do it yourselves. Thank you.